Hi, Dr. Pat here, looking at uh, input output models, continuing on this. And now we're going to do a problem to kind of set the stage for when we go reverse way. When we uh, have the demand and we're being asked to, to do the production level, to find the production level. Because basically what we're looking at is input output relationships is all about trying to manage to make decisions about production levels for your economy. So how much should the factories produce and we want to make sure that we uh, produce as much as we need in order to meet those demands and so that's why we kind of have information about the demand and then we go backwards to figure out our production levels and so that's what we're going to do this time so this is the same time, uh, problem that I did in my previous video and so let's kind of look at uh, the information solve this problem okay what are we looking for well we're looking for production level in this case so I'm um, looking for the how many spells to produce and then just remember in this process we're using up spells in order to produce spells so nothing comes for free for us and what do we have in this information well if you go back and look we had an efficiency rate of we use up 1200 spells in order to, to produce 16,000 spells and that was a rate of 0 0.075 we also have a demand of 135,000 spells. So that's the information that we have been given that we can extract from the word problem. The relationships that we have from the previous videos, I demonstrated that we have this relationship that I is remember the identity matrix. So if you're looking at it in terms of matrices, that's I for identity. But if you're looking at it in terms of numbers, that's just the number one. And so we have this relationship to play with. But I'm looking at that, I'm going remembering what are we, what's the question that we want to answer, and that's production level. And so that's actually our x. So we want to solve this thing for x. So I'm going to bring the parentheses over to the other side. And to kind of mimic what we do for matrices, even though I'm dealing with numbers right now, to kind of mimic what we do for matrices, instead of dividing, I'm going to multiply by the inverse. And basically, that's the reciprocal for multiplication. So I know that on this right hand side, this is really basically going to end up being a fraction. It's going to be a, um, and I'm playing with decimals, so this will be a, a decimal when we get done with it. But that's what I'm going to play with. So define production level when I know a demand. Okay, so we're re reversing the relationship. This time, mathematically speaking, demand is the independent variable. It's the piece of information we know first. And production level is our dependent variable that's what we're trying to find so that's what we have for this uh, formula we've reversed the relationship whereas in the formula that we started with X was the independent variable we knew that and then we calculated demand so basically what we're doing here is we've got the reverse situation so mathematically we reverse things around we find the inverse in a way okay so now let's uh, put in our numbers so I had the efficiency rate already calculated I plug that number in do 135,000 hey just a note here you don't have to put those zeros there as long as you're working in terms of thousands you could have you know saved some uh, pencil there and not written those zeros and doing the calculation I get uh, one 145,946 units so in order to uh, meet the demand of 135,000 um, spells, I have to produce 145,946. That's my target. Why? Is because remember, the production level is larger than the demand because some are used up in the production process. Okay, so, so when we're doing these problems, one of the things that you're looking at is uh, you're looking at uh, the results of production level. You can check it very quickly and just kind of compare your numbers there. By comparing those numbers, uh, I've got a production level that's larger than, than the demand, and I need that to be the case. So it's one way to kind of look at things to, to check to see if the uh, answer makes sense. Now another idea is why why did this number in the mathematics how did this number become bigger? And so when we go back there and I do this calculation right here, this is the number in blue right here, this 1.0811. I round it off so uh, it keeps on going for a long, long time. So what I've done is I've calculated this number here. I, I've, I've subtracted and then I took the uh, reciprocal because it's a it's a uh, fraction and because it's a number and this is the number we get and so this number is larger than one 
So that's when we remember when we multiply 135,000 by a number larger than one, we'll end up with a number that's bigger than what we started with. And so that's the kind of thing that we're working for. And that's where the mathematics comes into play of why we get a larger number. And so when we're looking at this, another way to interpret this economically as the input output is this 1.0811 number. It tells me that I need 1.08811 units of production for each unit of demand. So we know the demand, number of units of demand. This tells me for each unit of demand, that's how much production I need. And it's a number bigger than one, which is good because I need production to be bigger than demand because we use it up in production process. I want to just kind of really get into it even some more. I want to do some comparing some contrasting. I've just done an example here where we found uh, the production level knowing the demand. I had another video before that was looking at um, the demand, how much we had left over for demand when we knew the production level. Okay, so, so this is what the two formulas that we're playing with. In the one here, uh, this is when we know the demand, we're looking for production level. And then from my earlier example, I knew the production level and I was seeing how much we had left over for demand. When I plugged in those numbers, the efficiency rate was the same for that problem. Uh, this indicates 135 thousands. I'm doing this in terms of thousands because I don't want to put all those zeros there. And so this is indicating a demand of 135 thousand. And that's when we are using this relationship because we knew demand. We're finding production level. But on the right hand side, we had a 46 thousand units for production. And the question was, what's how much do we have left over for demand? And so there's that 46,000 right there. So that's the setup we have of our two problems that I've done. Now we want to look at what happens with the stuff in the parentheses, the coefficients in front of the 135 and the 46. So when we do that, here's what we've got. We've got the 1.0811. We saw that from just, just previously. And then 0.925 times this 46,000. So we have a production level of 46,000 and then this 0.925 number. It's smaller. It's smaller than one. Excuse me. Um, the reason being is because remember, this is our production level. And so we're going to end up with less to meet the demand because we're going to use up some of us some of this uh, the spells to produce new spells so when we get done with our production process we had a production level of 46,000 that doesn't mean I've got 46,000 left over because we used some up in that process and so this number is going to be less than 46,000 but on the other end this is the demand so I need this number to be larger than one because we want to figure out a production level and our production level has to be larger because we're going to use some up in the production process so that when we're done and we ship them off, we put them in the crates, we ship them off, that's got to be uh, uh, 135,000. So that means I've got to start off producing more than 135,000. And then we just did this one. So this, uh, what does this coefficient represent? It tells me units of production. Uh, it's, yeah, it's about the units of production I need for one unit of demand. So in this case, demand right here is our independent variable. That's where that for one unit comes to play. And then 1.08 is our, our factor in a way. Over here on the other side, since we're multiplying production level here that's where I get for one unit of production so the for one unit of that's key for me when I when I interpret these things I'm really looking at the for one unit of that statement those words to tell me how I who's my independent variable and which way the relationship is working and so uh, when I'm looking at the one on the left here, I know it's for one unit of demand because this number, this factor is multiplying 135, my demand. And it's about how my production changes. OK, so the 1.08111 goes with production because I'm my independent variable. The one I control is demand. When I go over here to the right, so we switch that relationship around. This time I know my uh, independent variable is the production level. So the for one unit of statement goes with production. 
We're controlling production because that's what you do with your independent variable. We control the production and in the calculation here the 0.925 tells me the result and the result that we're looking at is demand. I hope this helps. Kind of play with this. I know it's a really weird or, or it's, it's a challenging uh, concept uh, when, when you're kind of dealing with this for the first time about this input output relationship. But this is kind of weird. This is the one time or one of the few times that I really can say that when we look at the, uh, the terms for mathematics, independent variables, dependent variables, it actually, there's a, there's a relationship here of how input output relationships actually work and the meaning of these variables or these, these, these factors here. All right. Hope this helps. Have a good day. Talk to you later.